DevOps engineer, right? So DevOps as a culture, as a practice, okay, it, it uh, is used for implementing the CI/CD workflows. So DevOps, as the name indicates, it is a unification of two different teams in the past, right? So they, we used to have development team working on uh, software development and product development, and operations team is who maintain that uh, environment from uh, the operations or the run aspect, right? So these two teams used to have separate service lines, separate management, and uh, these two teams, if uh, they are working in silos, if they are working in a different vertical, then it, it brings in a lot of uh, um, challenges when it comes to uh, uh, delivering the quality product for the customer in a quicker way. Uh, this uh, different team and a different structure does not was not that uh, helpful so when um, uh, they understood this challenge so they have uh, unified this team and they have come up with some culture or i would say framework or a practice devops is a practice where uh, uh, they want to fill the gap that has uh, arisen between the development and uh, the operations team So in some organization, they have went ahead and uh, uh, integrated that into a one single organization called DevOps uh, team. And then they have started getting the engineers from development background and operations background. So both the teams uh, are like uh, now it is a unified team. So the DevOps team work in the entire software development lifecycle. See, uh, even the let's say like for operations there were three important areas. So they have to deploy the application on uh, the servers or environment, and then they have to operate it. Uh, when I say operate it, it contains uh, patching, upgrades, uh, backup, snapshot, images, and all those things, right? And uh, there are three other things called, uh, sorry, there are there is one more option called monitor. And uh, when it comes to um, the development and uh, deployment of the application, so the team has to plan. So they have to understand what the, business is expecting out of that application or the product and the business owner and the product owner they discuss and then collaborate and come up with a plan on what is the software that they are going to develop and then uh, they will write the code the software developers will write the code and then they will build the package so they will uh, test it in a different environment and they deploy it so this is the complete cycle of a software development all right so end-to-end uh, -end, including the operations so this is called as SDLC software development lifecycle. Okay, there are many different tools for each of these stages. Okay, like for planning, for uh, writing the code, for doing the packaging, for testing, for deployment, and uh, each and every things. Uh, there is a separate set of tools and uh, stuff that are available. And uh, primarily, the development team focuses on uh, these areas until the testing. And testing can be done together. Uh, there are some uh, organizations where they have uh, um, separate team for uh, software testing and quality testing and so on. So this practice, uh, uh, at the end, it, it helps you to plan smarter between the teams um, and then it helps you to implement the software or deploy the software quickly. The collaboration gets better if they are one team, they, are, they can collaborate easily between them. And at the end, for the customer, they want to ship the software uh, updates, enhancements, features, and benefits to the end users as quick as possible. So this DevOps culture, this framework is actually bringing that benefit. So it helps you to kind of uh, uh, provide the quicker, continuous development and deployment of the software and the features functionalities to the customer. So there are many different uh, native products within the cloud, like AWS provides its own set of uh, tools like uh, the code, uh, commit code, build code, pipeline, and so on. And similarly, Azure also has got a complete set of package called Azure DevOps Services, or it used to be Visual Studio Team Services, which has uh, converted into Azure DevOps Services with, uh, again, the same set of services, right? Azure Repository, Azure Board, Azure Test Plan, Azure Artifact. So for each of these stages, both AWS and Azure has got uh, a set of tools and uh, generally like uh, uh, there are multiple different uh, areas uh, within this uh, devops they call it as seven c's i'm not sure how many of you have heard about uh, this uh, seven c's but earlier like uh, people used to talk only about um, uh, 
the continuous integration and the continuous deployment and uh, there is a confusion with continuous delivery and uh, continuous deployment i'll come to that uh, shortly okay i'll explain what exactly is the difference between continuous delivery and uh, the continuous deployment so when you ask me what are the different c's of uh, devops it used to be very less before but now uh, it has come to a stage where there are seven c's it it might increase or it might get uh, merged uh, into into uh, some lesser number in the future but for now there are uh, seven c's of devops which we need to understand but uh, there are more okay so uh, if you ask me like i would say there are 10 c's the first one is the innovation right uh, so every organization is uh, trying to see like how they can uh, improve uh, the way that they are doing the work right it they want the work to be as small as possible so they want it to be as small as possible in a way the process has to be shortened and uh, they want the things to happen in a small small iterations and um, it has to definitely like uh, the improvement has to be both evolutionary and the revolutionary so in innovation is something that uh, they expect from uh, the team so that the updates the enhancements that they are making it has to be small small uh, updates and it has to be quick right so and again there is uh, a thing called continuous planning so continuous planning is a way where uh, uh, the evolution happens so this is where you go and create the jira tickets or jira stories and uh, jira board so this is where you go and plan the events and plan the uh, stories i will explain what is stories and what is uh, i mean in a way you can understand what are the different tasks involved in a particular project is what you can call it as a story in short okay so you go and, and plan it and then uh, come up with an idea what are the different stuffs that is going to make up this software product and what are the stuffs uh, we can create it in waves and uh, wave planning is also uh, something which you can consider then continuous implementation is there okay where uh, you go and uh, uh, implement the new changes or the initial deployment so maybe i'll first list down all these things continuous implementation maybe um, many of you might be aware of uh, the picture right i will show you this picture so that way you understand what i'm talking about see there are many different stages in the modern devops environment right so it it starts with planning coding building the software uh, storing it in an artifact and then testing the software releasing the software to the customer and then you deploy it for uh, the either the development environment or the production environment and then comes the operation and monitor so these are the different stages with continuous uh, integration and the continuous deployment so there are two different uh, um, major major uh, cycles or uh, i would say like this is the overall stuff which i'm trying to convey uh, but yeah so here continuous build continuous testing continuous release so there are many tools available i'll come to what exactly those uh, tools brings into the stuff continuous deployment so operations uh, uh, you need not call it as continuous operations but i will just list it here and monitoring yeah people are using that term continuous monitoring and then you also have the continuous detection that is a new term Uh, after the security has been uh, included in everything and uh, after the dr got more focus so you also have this uh, business continuity and the disaster recovery and this is mainly uh, identifying any potential uh, threats vulnerabilities gaps so we maintain uh, something called raid log you might have heard about it so whatever the risks in the environment the assumptions that we make while doing something the issues in the environment defects in the environment so all these will be captured in a register raid log or a risk uh, register uh, they used to call it as risk register uh, issues register and so on but you, it can be a single log document where uh, all the potential threats failures and uh, gaps uh could be captured and we come up with the uh, mitigation right so that is one thing continuous monitoring of course like uh, the observability which we talk about uh, what uh, as many metrics that we can capture from the systems like cpu utilization memory utilization disk throughput latency network and all those things right whatever the number of metrics we can capture whatever the amount of events we could store in a central place the logs so the maximum we could uh, understand the systems functionalities and uh, the performance aspects 
of course uh, the performance uh, not just limits to the cpu memory even the storage capacity and all those things right so all these things has to be continuously uh, uh, kept in, into consideration and the continuous operations is where uh, you have the uh, sustainability right where you have to um, patch the systems back up the systems uh, monitor uh, enable monitoring and then uh, you have to continuously have ITSM integration. It can be service now or Jira, or it can be your remedy, whatever ticketing system you have for that continuous operations. So in order to maintain those services, those software uh, applications around the clock, you need to have a better raw systems, right? So about these things, I will uh, explain one by one. So these are the different C's that are there, but uh, some people call it as seven C's, some people call it as even how many now? So it is a total of close to 10 now, right? Let me 11, okay? So the C's are increasing, but uh, uh, at a very high level, you need to be aware of two important things, continuous integration and the continuous uh, delivery or deployment. So at a very high level, the difference between continuous development and sorry deployment and continuous delivery is a very small thing okay so when this is the complete cycle of software development right so we build it uh, we test it we stage it we deploy it and then we continue continuously test it so in continuous delivery the deployment to production is manual okay in continuous deployment even the deployment to production is automated so that is the only main difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment so people interchangeably use this words and sometimes people will say cd and then they will tell continuous delivery and uh, sometimes people will say ci cd and then for cd they will say continuous deployment so if they are using continuous deployment even the deployment is also completely automated if they are saying continuous delivery then the deployment process is manual only that is the difference uh, that is there between uh, cd uh, continuous delivery and continuous deployment so i will just put it here Continuous deployment means deployment to production is completely automated and uh, continuous delivery deployment is manual. Okay, so that is the main difference in the CD term that we use. So continuous development, some people will use continuous deployment, some people use continuous delivery. So uh, that is the small um, uh, difference that it makes. So uh, yeah, so planning, of course, uh, uh, there is a lot of work that goes beyond planning. So the product owner from um, the service provider organization, the scrum master who manages the jira board and uh, the agile coach so they understand all the business requirement they uh, they will facilitate options to go and capture uh, the feedback from the end users from the application owners okay so that has to be uh, captured frequently so they will enable all these things uh, in order to uh, create iterations of uh, improvement for that particular product. So at the end, what these people do is, is to maximize the business value that the business gets out of that software product or uh, the software application that we are developing. So at the end, uh, the product owner and the scrum master, they are primary job is to understand the business requirement and then the enhancement that the business is looking continuously collect the end user feedback and provide a roadmap to improve the business value that the software application is providing so they, we will come up with a desired product at the initial stage but that will need to evolve and that will need to get uh, new features and functionalities as the end users are uh, requiring for it so the continuous build is where uh, you go and uh, create those uh, softwares and uh, there are a lot of ways how you can automate um, the build cycle or automate uh, some of these uh, activities the when i say build it is about uh, the compiling the package uh, compiling the application and then they do uh, uh, build that particular software package and then they store it in uh, a particular artifactory right it can be uh, uh, nexus or it can be any artifactory so here this automated build in many of the organization they use uh, jenkins in some of the organization they might use aws code pipeline and uh, in some organization they might also use the azure uh, uh, pipelines okay so it is again part of the azure devops and uh, aws code pipeline is part of the Is part of the AWS DevOps uh, toolset. So um, for automation, for uh, continuous build, 
the the what i mean what they do as part of the automation is that the entire compiling of the software building of the package and storing it in an artifactory it will be done using um, the tool sets which are there so jenkins is very very popular in a way that it is open source and um, it has got the complete uh, automation uh, for supporting the build testing and deployment so it is not limited to build okay even the build test and the deployment can be done continuously using the jenkins as a software it has got a lot of integration options okay it has got a lot of pre developed plugins to work with aws or azure or gcp or for your on premises for your kubernetes environment so it has got a very good powerful integration and a lot of plugins are there for your uh, jenkins as a tool and uh, see the other tools are catching up right like azure pipelines or aws pipeline they were developed purpose built for that particular cloud platform so it, it was not robust in a way like it cannot support uh, multiple hybrid cloud environment or multi-cloud environment so that's where people are extensively using uh, jenkins for the range of plugins it supports and the integration options it have not just on the <clears throat> deployment environment even uh, if someone is creating a uh, let's say a kind of uh, code commit or uh, a, a location where you have the con content store like code artifact this is where you go and store all the uh, packages and software uh, in in, in uh, before you uh, deploy it like so all these integrations with different uh, version control systems so people call it as version control system it can be your uh, github or uh, it can be your bitbucket or it can be your code commit uh, there are many different version control systems it has got complete integration with your uh, jit tool i will explain what exactly that is uh, all about and uh, in, a, in in short people go for jenkins because of the plugins it supports and uh, there are a lot of integration options it has got but whereas the azure pipeline the aws pipeline they are cloud native cacd service provided by the native cloud provider and it offers built-in capabilities for uh, again building testing and deploying the application in their own platform right and also it has got limitations in the number of languages it supports the plugin and the integrations are limited to the native uh, the specific cloud right and when it comes to testing there are many different tools that are available uh, natively within uh, the cloud platform but if you go to a different organization they go and use uh, tools like um, JUnit. Uh, they use tools like uh, Selenium. They use, in some organization, they also use. I mean, use this uh, tools like SonarCube for uh, uh, what do you call uh, testing the co code, uh, the validating whether the code is having any vulnerabilities or issues, and whether the code can be simplified. And there are many different. Uh, uh, framework there are many different tools that are there for testing your uh, code and then um, uh, help the developers uh, simplify the code and then they, they can also ensure the correctness on what they have written right so uh, the, the reason i have written multiple different tools here certain tools are uh, based for certain uh, requirements so let's say like selenium selenium is good in uh, open source testing framework for web browsers okay if you want to test some web applications and if you want the developers to check the behavior and functionality of the web application so it can be apache or it can be ias or different browsers or different platform selenium is very powerful there but then uh, java uh, application development and testing it is very much powerful in junit so it, it all depends on uh, the application development team and the business owner to decide upon which testing tool is perfect for their uh, execution of testing to validate the code or uh, to uh, check the correctness of the code to remove the vulnerabilities to simplify the code they have many different tools and uh, <clears throat> it all depends on what platform we have developed that uh, particular tool so continuous um, release is something uh, uh, there are <clears throat> many different ways so when there is a new feature when there is a new functionality or when there is a new capability that is ready for production it has to reach that end user quickly okay that is how we actually uh, uh, get this release done so it can be a feature or it can be a new functionality or it can be a new capability in your application so all these has to get um, quickly into the production environment and that's what we call it as continuous release cycle so um, yeah so testing um let me just put it this way so testing can be done at 
two important levels and I will just try to make it simple for your learning. So for any web apps primarily, not limited to web apps. Uh, I have seen a lot of people using it for web apps and this is mainly for Java related um, code or Java related applications. And this framework, uh, JUnit is a popular testing framework for that. And Sonar Cube is mainly for testing your uh, code level. Okay, if there is any code um, that could be simplified or uh, the correctness in the code, the simplification that we can do bring in like some people will write 100 lines of code which can be written in 30 40 lines so those uh, uh manipulation or those particular uh, updates can be obtained from the sonar cube so correctness simplification and uh, even to certain aspect the inspection the vulnerabilities could be identified if there is any uh, issues and some people will store the password or uh, some uh, credentials or some intellectual information in that code itself so this will uh, this platform will quickly identify and then uh, the code quality can be improved so the coding standard the coding best practices can be very much achieved using this continuous inspection tool to uh, so there are a lot of tools that are available even there is a tool called code climate <laughs> sorry code climate which can be used for uh, doing a code review again code review and uh, also it, it uses a quality checks analysis against what against the best practices standards and then uh, whatever uh, the coding uh, quality can be achieved uh, using these uh, different tool sets so there is one more area where uh, you need to focus in devops framework or devops practices continuous collaboration okay so team has to communicate quickly so they have to have some platform uh, between them and uh, mostly like i have seen um, especially uh, teams are uh, working together using microsoft teams and uh, the slack okay slack is a messaging platform that enables you, you to have real-time communication discussions collaboration among uh, the devops team members and also it provides a lot of different functionalities it has options to do file sharing it has got uh, direct messaging options and you can go and create separate channels for separate project or separate enhancement that you are doing so the communication the collaboration the coordination within the devops team has become very much powerful using these uh, uh, collaboration tools especially slack and micro microsoft teams are the top two softwares that are used for uh, uh, as a collaboration medium between the team members either during the development uh, stage or uh, even during the production go live or uh, stuff like uh, you, you have it right and the advantage of ms teams is that it has got a lot of integrations with uh, many different tool sets like part of your microsoft 365 either it is sharepoint or uh, emailing or uh, conferencing chatting so there are a lot of different uh, microsoft 365 services that could be directly integrated to your microsoft teams then that brings in a lot of value add uh, when it comes uh, for uh, uh, the collaboration requirement so at a very high level so devops is a software development approach or culture or framework that has got many different sub options like what i have listed here and all these options has to be carefully thought upon by the product owner and the agile coach so they have to enhance the software development approach okay so it involves primarily this continuous uh, integration continuous testing continuous development and deployment and uh, delivery and then continuous monitoring and then continuous operation so there are many c's okay and uh, uh, whatever i have written here are uh, some of them where uh, you know like uh, that is of uh, very high priority <clears throat> So this is exactly the culture practice many organization is trying to adopt or already adapted and many of the enterprise top companies have already developed their own in-house mechanisms to uh, develop high quality software and they have reduced the software life cycle or software development deployment life cycle which has definitely re uh, resulted in greater satisfaction from the end users from the customers and that is what some that is what every company is looking for right so devops is a software culture software practice software development approach that has resulted in a very big uh, uh, 
uh, revolution and it has resulted in a lot of uh, benefits and some of the benefits i would say like the frequent releases that we could see in uh, this modern application so whenever there is a new feature functionalities whenever there is a new release they, they can they can be able to go and quickly create a change and then um, those things could be implemented very quickly and also they have created the applications in a way that uh, whatever um, the containerized platform or uh, the microservices based architecture it has simplified the risk of the entire application going down right it is going to just go and touch a specific small service or a small uh, component and it is not going to completely um, touch all the stuff so there is no manual intervention here and we are doing it to, through continuous testing and uh, uh, anyways like we might have done it in a sandbox first and then uh, we might have observed what has happened and we will uh, do it in uh, development environment we will do it in quality assurance um, qa environment if some organization might have uh, some separate environment for user acceptance and uh, system integration so there are different organizations having different environment to have thorough outcomes or thorough testing before even they go and deploy in production environment so production is the very last thing that uh, the organization will touch and uh, before that it, it generally comes through either two environments or minimum at least one environment so that in non-production they go and understand uh, uh, what is being implemented and what is the impact and what is the outcome of it and all those things are tested in the non-production and then it will come to the production so that the, in a way that it is also reducing the risk and the productivity is of course completely getting better because like at the end um, the business has to be competitive in nature so if you are not releasing that particular new functionality of p or feature some other competitor is going to do that right so uh, nowadays like it's a very challenging uh, market so uh, the new features and functionalities has to be provided as soon as possible and that is where the continuous integration using aws code pipeline or uh, uh, Azure Pipeline or Jenkins, which is a kind of uh, fully managed CACD service that uh, AWS provides through Code Pipeline. So that is where you go and uh, integrate with different stages like the source code integration, the continuous testing integration, quad quality analysis integration, the feedback, the notifications, the collaboration. So all these things can be brought into single umbrella called uh, Code Pipeline. So Code Pipeline is a word that is used for across all the CACD pipeline okay so before we get into that uh, specific term right so code pipeline is not just uh, limited to your okay so yeah this is the entire thing is called code pipeline so people get confused with uh, the terminology so this is equivalent to your jenkins